What is up Evil Dead fans? I am going to make a video on how to strip down your chainsaw bar. Now you do have options, of course. You can use a belt sander or a rotary sander. Now a rotary sander turns. The thing you're gonna remember with a rotary sander is if once you get down to the metal, you wanna have that nice, even with the uh, grain look. So if you get down to the metal with a rotary one, you're gonna have to hand sand all that out. And depending on the roughness of your sandpaper, <clears throat> you're gonna be sanding for a while. Also, if you use a, um, uh, like a belt sander that moves like this, you'll get the same kind of things in there. It won't be in a circular pattern. If you get down to the metal, it'll be more of at a jagged little weird notches everywhere, which you'll have to sand out. I don't do either one of those. Um, or you could paint it silver or paint it white. I've seen people do both and it just boggles my mind because when you, if you want the metal look, you need to get it in the metal. So what I do first, and if you remember one of my last videos, I talk about automotive sandpaper. What I do is get some really tough stuff, which I use a lot of this. I've actually got two of these pieces that I've used for the last two years and I scuffed it up. And then what I use, I have a scraper, and I use what's called aircraft paint remover. Now this stuff is corrosive, wear gloves, make sure you're in a ventilated area, make sure you don't eat it, make sure you don't stick it in your eye, because you can go blind or die. So if you can't keep your hands out your damn mouth or your eyeballs, don't use it. Um, here's some port already, uh, make sure it's a non-corrosive pan and it looks like applesauce it's usually not this dark it's just because this is the pan that i designate for this stuff and make sure it's a safe paintbrush to use too now what happens is i'll put an application half of it here so i can hold it down here when i start scraping i'll do two applications i'll put the first application on wait 15 minutes and then scrape it off and then add a second one scrape it off and then same with the other. So let's get down to the application part of it. Now, if you decide to say, screw this, you're just gonna sand it by hand. Um, that can take, to get it nice and shiny and looking good by hand, it can take up upwards to an hour to two hours. Now this way, what you do is you take all the stuff off. You still have, will have to do some hand sanding, but it limits it down to 10 to 20 minutes tops to get it nice and shiny so what you do is you just dab it on you can brush it on i prefer the dab technique because i'm cool like that and notice i'm wearing gloves so if anybody needs a prostate exam i am available for a little while and if you uh young people don't know what that is that's the thing where old people get a finger up the butt to check for prostate cancer or polyps so just to let you know when you turn 50 you're gonna have a doctor's hand up your butt <clears throat> if you want to stay healthy. So we're gonna let that sit for 15 minutes and then when it's ready for scraping, we're gonna get right back into it. Okay, so it's been sitting for 15 minutes. You can tell I did a little test spot right here and I'm gonna start scraping it off. And it's just like a putty knife scraper. That's really all it is. See, there's the first scrape. See how much has already come off? Almost all the way down to the metal. And see, you could put it on there and do something else you have to work on, go take a shit, get some coffee, whatever, while this is sitting. Now, the reason why I use this aircraft stripper stuff is it's good for automotive applications too so where you pick it up is just any automotive store and <clears throat> a few other things i'm going to show you too uh, i'm going to talk to you a little bit about rock and shock coming up and that's over in the new england area i don't have the dates off hand to tell you but i'll tell you a little bit about what's going on and i'll find the dates and things like that. So basically, Rock and Shock, you know, it's like a, it's a horror con, but there's gonna be a lot of cool stuff there that you really need to go see. 
Um, there's going to be a mock-up of the Evil Dead 2 cabin there, which uh, the way I know that is the guy who's building that and doing the photo ops, um, he contacted me and needed a top for a chainsaw for one of the props and for his personal use. And also I told him that I would send him my necro for his display. And that's just, you know, when somebody needs something like that, I'm always willing to help out. And usually I don't do tops for people, <clears throat> but since he knows what he's doing, I made him a top. I just don't do willy nilly to anybody because if you have no knowledge of building anything, you're just gonna be left in the dark and bitch and piss and moan about, oh, it doesn't fit the way I want it to fit. And that happens way too much when you sell props and stuff like that. Especially parts that, uh, you know, you have to actually build something with. Now, you don't want to do that. I shouldn't have done that because it could have gotten my eye, but it's pretty much gone. As you can see, the first application here, it's almost down to the metal on that first half. Now, I'm going to put another application on. And what you want to do is you always remember, you always want to keep that stuff, the open canister of it, uh, with your brush away from you when you're working. Because it's the last thing you want to bump. And if you notice that I'm just scraping it right on my floor, right on my shop floor, because it's concrete. And, and this stuff really stinks. It smells like, uh, if you ever mess with hair dye, it smells like that times 200. Uh, so... Um, but yeah, yeah, I'll go over what I'm doing with the Necro because I had to do some modifications to it. Nothing severe. Um, I had to because uh, it had a latex covering on it. And if you know latex, latex um, breaks down over time. And my paint and stuff was starting to wear and the latex was breaking down a bit. So um, I did some modifications to it and I'll go over that once I'm done showing you what happens with this uh but we got my second application on there all that stuff and the other side of the bar this is really what i got it down to and you can see there's still some hand sanding that needs to be done i could go over it one more time but it's kind of pointless so because when it gets super thin um when you're left with just super thin stuff to scrape off you can pretty much leave it on there for about 20 minutes and start to wipe it off. The thing is, you do not want this stuff to get dry. If you let it get dry, it's, you know, it's activeness is gone. Um, so, yeah, about 15 minutes, 15, 20 minutes tops, and then start your scraping process. So, if you buy the aircraft stripper, um, that you can get at any automotive store. Runs about ten dollars. The gloves, you can get these anywhere. Uh, the scraper, you can get these anywhere too for like a dollar. So we'll get right back to it in a minute. Let's uh, see what happens with this. All right, so we got the second application already scraped, and this is what I'm left with. You can see it's mostly just the metal, and having it like this, I don't have a whole ton of hand sanding to do um, it's mainly getting it right down to the shiny metal and that's it I mean if you got little nooks and crannies you have to deal with uh, like I said you can put on a thin little layer once you got it down a lot and use a little wire brush or uh, even like a like a hard bristle toothbrush um, <clears throat> Or more like an automotive style toothbrush, if you know what I'm talking about. Or something like that, you can buy at a hardware store. You know, you can buy those little brushes uh, that look like toothbrushes. And it will help take all the little stuff out of here, which I haven't done yet. So, I'll end up doing that here in a bit. But, so you can tell the difference and how much time I saved by using that versus hand sanding the whole thing. Or using an electrical appliance to sand it. Um... A lot more free time to do other builds and to do other things so we'll go over the necro next okay before we get to the necro you can see right here i did hit all little fine spots with the wire brush 
got some on my finger, which is stupid. Um, as you can see, I removed all the paint. All it needs is a nice, uh, quick hand sand over the whole thing. That takes about 20 minutes tops. Um, any kind of stray liquid that you have, any stripper that's extra, you need to make sure you remove that. Do not use water on this once you have stripped it because you will do what is called flash rusting and it will start to rust really quick. You use any kind of other chemicals such as like an acetone or something like that to remove that um, and then let that sucker dry. If you get any gunk in the edges here, what you need to do is just get your scraper and pull it out. Even You can even let that dry and then pull it out. That's the easiest way to do that. Um, so that's something to remember if you decide to do this. Let's get down to the necro, necro, necro. All right, so right here we have my necro, which is gonna be sent down to Rock and Shock, and I'm gonna go over the Rock and Shock details after I show you this. Um, I said I was gonna send it to him. I didn't charge him anything for it. Also, I only charged him half price for the top uh, just because of what he's doing. I think it's cool um, doing all the stuff for Rock and Shock and that's badass, and I will go over where you can find him as well. Um, his business is Feature Presentation, and he does amazing work. And he is New England's premier Jack Sparrow. So what I did, if you remember from my past videos, this is the one that Al redid the cover, and he put the pages in. Um, what was happening was the uh, latex was breaking down. And it was getting light in spots and things like that. And I could just repaint it, but it's still going to have that breakdown problem. Um, I basically had to turn this from a hero book to a, to a used book. And what that means is usually the hero book or the a hero anything as a prop is like the main one that you see on film. That is filmed the most. It has the most detail. Now, I didn't lose any detail with this. I made it so it's more durable and uh, in case people will handle this thing. Because if it's just the latex and people are handling it um, and taking photos with it, if that's the case, what will happen is the latex will break down even more. Usually, you know, even air breaks down latex. So, um, you know, I didn't tell Al I was doing this. Triple uh, X Gotham and Triple X. This guy did amazing work, and I, I had it's some I had to do. It wasn't I, I couldn't couldn't ignore it. Basically, so as you can tell, it's. It's harder now, but has all the nice detail and the different tones of lights and darks. And also, uh, the Evil Dead 2 book was originally done by Tom Sullivan, of course, and what Sam wanted was a melted look. So if it is flesh and it is burnt and melted, it's going to be hard and stiff, which this is. Um, so you can see right there a small spot where the latex was breaking down right there uh, I'm gonna do a few other little paint details to this and to dull it down uh, basically what I had to do was go over it with a, a Mod Podge and then repaint it in three different textures or diff different tones of paint excuse me different tones of paint and then do a black wash let's go to the back now the the ear that was done was originally just hot glue and paint was not sticking that hot glue hot glue does not like paint of any sorts really um so what i did is i re-sculpted the ear in the exact spot the exact way that al put it on there to give it a little more depth and these lines here are al's original lines original lines and i had to retexture everything again so it all blended together and it came out really nice Really like it. Um, on the inside, it's still somewhat wet, but you got the same look over here. You got all the pages that Al did, Triple X, Gotham, and Triple X. He did such an amazing job, and I really and he's gonna be a rock and shock too. And I hope he's happy with it. And I think it's cool that you know uh, feature presentation is gonna benefit will benefit from having this for their display and having something that I've done and Al has done as well on display is really really cool um it's up to him uh the gentleman from free to presentation and like i said at the end of this video i will tell you how to get a hold of him at the con um it's up to him if he wants to send it back or not or if he wants it for future things or 
anything like that. Um, I still have to get this thing doled down. It's kind of, it's kind of bugging me. Um, but it's kind of up to him. Uh, so that's really all I had to do. You know, it's nice and stiff and durable. So if people are handling this, um, nothing's going to wear off. So there it is. Okay, so there it is. That's how I stripped down my chainsaw bars. That's what's going on with the Necronomicon, my personal Necronomicon. It will be at Rocket Shock. Whether or not they want to use it or not, it's fine with me. Um, like I said, you can send it back to me. You can do whatever with it um, for more displays. I think it's really cool to have it on display for people to see and to um, immerse themselves a little farther into an Evil Dead experience having a Necronomicon there. Um, uh, feature presentation they are making the you know a set up set of the cabin and uh, it's my good friend Brandon who's doing it um, he's actually gonna have a booth there too definitely look for him and uh, say hi to him for me and he wants me to send him a bunch of stickers so I'll have a bunch of stickers there too so you can get one of my breast groovy chainsaw stickers so where is rock and shock where is this place well it's in Worcester Massachusetts Ox October 11th through the 13th at the DCU Center. Um, guests include Bruce Campbell, the Ladies of the Evil Dead, Kane Hodder, uh, Bill Mosley. Uh, we've learned we've uh, um, lost a near and dear horror movie icon today. Um, we've lost the captain. So uh, that's sad to see. Um, so definitely go up and say hi to Bill. Uh, if you don't know Bill Mosley as he was in Devil's Rejects, you know, Rob, Rob Zombie Films, he also was in Army of Darkness. He was one of the scout um, deadites. He's, he was the one with the eye patch, believe it or not. Um, Sherilyn Finn will be there. I like me some Sherilyn Finn. Um, and, you know, you got Derek Mears, you know, Derek Mears and Kane Hodder under the same room under the same room, roof, in the same room, you know, two different people who played Jason. So, it's gonna be a good time. I think you should go if you have the opportunity, if you're in the area or if you're looking for a con to go to. Um, definitely go do that. And definitely go see Brandon, feature presentation. He's he's doing the, uh, his group's doing the photo ops, uh, the Bruce Campbell photo ops. Bruce Campbell and Ladies of the Evil Dead. Let's say you've gone to another con or something where you got something signed by, you know, like, the cast of Army of Darkness or Evil Dead 2, and you need the Ladies of the Evil Dead, that's where you can find them. And those are the ladies from Evil Dead 1, of course. Sorry I haven't been very enthused in this video. I'm kind of tired. I got a lot of a lot of stuff to do, a lot of stuff to wrap up and get sent out. Um, so, but I got some ideas for a future video coming up and also uh, what's going on with chainsaws as well. So guys, until next time, stay groovy and remember, go to Rock and Shock, October 11th through the 13th, Worcester, Massachusetts, at the DCU Center. Until next time, you guys stay groovy.